Welcome to Fire and by the Fire, where we're going through the book of Acts, verse by verse, because the book of Acts is our best example of what it is to be the church. And now we're actually getting to this place in Acts where we're seeing, well, what's it like to be the church in the end times? Like, what's it like to be the persecuted church? Because that's what it'll literally be like. Um, and what we see that it's not the Romans that are trying to kill them, and it's not the common people that are trying to kill them, it's all the religious people that are trying to kill them. They have deemed them outlaws because they point at a different Messiah than what they think is about to come. Because they point towards the real Messiah while the religious people are pointing towards their religious knowledge and their, their arrogance and their lack of the Holy Spirit um, to just, dis you know, you disagree with me. Oh, it's so mad. I just gnashed my teeth. Now I got to bind you and murder you. That's what it's going to look like. Jesus Christ said, even the elect will be deceived. And now we see, because the elect killed Jesus. Think about that. The high priest of the temple tore his shirt, blasphemy, and then they all spat him and beat him. Then they killed him like it was the high priest, all those other priests of the temple. It was the elect that killed Jesus. It was the elect that are now hunting down the real Christians. It is the elect doing these things. Like it's not the Romans. I mean, you know, the Romans allowed the killing of Jesus, but it was the it was clearly it was it was the religious people who in the word of God said met at the high priest's house and counseled together against to conspire against Jesus to kill him. And they did. And the Romans just simply allowed it to take place, but it was the religious people who killed Jesus. And now it's the religious people who are killing anybody who are doing the business of Jesus. And it started really with Stephen, who was literally tending to the widows, the thing the church should have been doing, but they were neglecting is what the word of God said. And here he is tending to the widows and it draws the attention of religious people. And then he confesses through the Holy Spirit while he's dragged into council everything in this book that has led to that moment in time, the advancement of the kingdom of heaven this whole book is only about one thing the advancement of the kingdom of heaven on earth as it is in heaven and stephen laid all that out through the holy spirit and then pointed at them and said but you murdered the messiah you know you murdered him he doesn't dwell in this temple he dwelt in that man's body and you murdered him that's how it played out and it made him so angry that they gnashed their teeth and they killed him and now what we're seeing is, is just like what will happen in the end times. There'll be all of a sudden this moment in time where it's no longer a few people are drawing the attention of the beast system and the religious elect, but it'll be all of a sudden all y'all. Now we're going to kick in your doors. You're all outlaws. And that's what we're seeing here. Uh, you know, that's what it is to be the church. <laughs> like you have to understand this comfortable thing that we see <laughs> is not what being the church is. This is what it means to pick up your cross and follow him. So I'm gonna to go to Acts. This is right after Stephen's death. Um, and we'll just pick it up in Acts 1. Now Saul was consenting to his death at the time, a great persecution arose against the church, which was at Jerusalem. And they were all scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. And devout men carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentation over him. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering every house and dragging off men and women, committing them to prison. Therefore, those who were scattered went everywhere preaching the word. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ to them. And the multitudes with one accord heeded the things spoken by Philip, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits crying with a loud voice came out of many who were possessed and many who were paralyzed and lame were healed. And there was great joy in that city. All right, I'm going to pause right there because this is this is very significant because what happened was they were in Jerusalem and they were growing tremendously. And then this persecution happened and they scattered. But everywhere they went, they pre they were preaching the word. So really it was the it's funny how how wickedness still advances the kingdom of heaven. Um, you know, God allow he doesn't, he doesn't orchestrate the wickedness, uh, but he does allow it to happen. And even when the wicked things happen, it advances his kingdom. So here's the persecution of the church. They're scattered. 
what do they do? They preach the word everywhere they go. And now the church is growing in other places. So not just there, but now it's growing in other places as well. Um, this is how <clears throat> the word of God works. And there'll be a day. Uh, you know, the more the persecution takes place, the more the church is going to grow. I believe that's why the American church is dwindling because there's just nothing really in it. It's, it's, it's like fake power. They're, 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 they ha it has a form of godliness, but they're denying its power. Uh, just like Timothy said, uh, it's a form of godliness, but they are denying its power. Like there's no miracles in the church today. I mean, look what happens here. Therefore, those who are scattered went everywhere preaching the word. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preach Christ to them. And a lot of churches are like, oh, we do that, we do that stuff. And the multitude with one accord heeded the things spoken by Philip, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. Now, are you seeing and heeding miracles? Like, is that a thing in your church? Like, it's not. Like, not to say that churches don't see miracles, but it's not everywhere they go, they're heeding miracles, like this church does. And what the church will be doing or like churches that are being persecuted, those who are really being the hands and feet of Jesus Christ in tribulation in parts of Africa and China, they're seeing all sorts of miracles. For unclean spirits crying with a loud voice came out of many who were possessed. I think about that. You're, everywhere they're going, they're performing miracles. There's literally demon possessed people screaming screaming out and they're just being those demons are being dragged out of people you see a lot of that taking place no i mean you know anytime you see the word witchcraft in the bible oftentimes the word is pharmacia and what we see is there's a lot of demon possessed people out there who are being they're they're using witchcraft or pharmaceuticals to try to suppress those demons and, you know, I, you know, we've all seen, you get, there's people walking down the street just screaming at themselves. Like, what do you think that is? That's what this is. Unclean spirits crying with a loud voice. And they're yanking those demons out of these people. For unclean spirits crying with a loud voice came out of many who were possessed and many who were paralyzed and lame or healed. Lame and paralyzed people are being healed. This is what it looks like to be the church, ladies and gentlemen. Here's people persecuted, murdered, hunted down, dragging them out of their houses, kicking in the doors, dragging out men and women, throwing them in prison. They're scattered. They're scattered everywhere. And now, so they're just preaching the word and they're performing miracles and they're dragging out unclean spirits out of possessed people and they're healing people who are lame and paralyzed. This is what it is to be the church. And I think almost, I almost wish I could take a snapshot of this and be like, that's what it is to be the church right there. Like that is it. This is what it is to be about the business of Jesus Christ. You know, cause all of this scattering and these arrests, how it started was Stephen was tending to the widows, which the religious people were neglecting. And as a result, they kill him. They start hunting down all the Christians. I mean, let's go back to 8.3. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering every house and dragging off men and women, committing them to prison. Therefore, those who were scattered went everywhere preaching the word. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ to them. And the multitudes with one accord heeded the things spoken by Philip, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits crying out with a loud voice came out of many who were possessed and many who were paralyzed and lame were healed. And there was great joy in that city. Like, what's that look like? I, I, I could read about that stuff and maybe I can hear about places in Africa having things like that happen, you know, but... I've never seen anything like that of you. I really haven't. I don't know, ladies and gentlemen. I, I just think we have to really wake up to what it'll be like in the end times whenever we're all of a sudden outlaws, when they're kicking in doors and dragging off men and women and committing them to prison 
and we're being scattered. Like, what is it we're doing? Because I think a lot of people, when they plan for the end times, they're planning on, you know, just coming out to the woods somewhere and bunkering down and just surviving, waiting it out. You know, I prepped, I got all my food. What the church will be doing is tending to the widows, the orphans, visiting the prisoners, the sick, feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, healing people, performing miracles, preaching the word of God. That's what we'll be doing. And this is what it'll look like. Exactly what it'll look like. Be very clear, don't be confused. It'll be the religious people doing this to you. Jesus said, even the elect will be deceived. And as you see here, the elect are clearly deceived. I mean, Saul is Paul. Paul is clearly of the elect, but he is deceived. I mean, of course, his eyes will be open, but right now he is deceived. He is deceived. And don't think that the church won't be deceived when the Antichrist who most will be pointing out as the Messiah when he goes to that temple and commits the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet by sitting in the throne of God and declaring himself to be God they will be deceived be very clear be very clear but if you won't the remnant the remnant won't those who are about the business of Jesus, but they will be outlaws. <laughs>